Hi friends, today I will discuss about communication and as you know communication is the life and blood of every organization. When you talk about a developing organization, flourishing in all aspects, communication flows in every sphere. But if you divide communication in a broad spectrum, it will be in verbal communication, non-verbal communication. But we will be focusing on the concept of non-verbal communication. What is normally non-verbal communication? That's called body language. What is body language? Communication with a huge of gesture, posture, style, space and personal appearance. So I divided non-verbal communication into four different aspects. One is kinesis, haptics, chronomics and appulses. So let's concentrate on kinesis. What is kinesis? Kinesis is the communication or study of communication through body language, through gesture, postures. What is gestures? The movements. How do you move? Many times when you speak in verbal communication, it is the words, the sentences, the idioms and phrases that communicate. But what need to be compensated when you communicate is called a body language. The use of your hands, the use of your shoulders, the use of your head and eyes. That's the most important factor. Now, shrugging of the shoulders, you know, upward direction indicates I don't care, I don't mind. When you stand on your seat, you know, if you're leaning against a chair and your shoulder is hunched down, it's loosely held, that means I'm tired or I'm not interested. But an upright shoulder that indicates that I'm attentive and I'm listening to you. Use of the hands during the process of communication is very effective. Now we advise candidates not to put their hands in the pocket as it indicates or we advise them not to cross their hands like this because it indicates a defensive attitude. So your hands should lose hairily and they should gesture automatically. Now haptics is Communication through personal space. Now, what is personal space? One second, this culture specific. In the Middle Eastern cultures, people prefer to sit close to each other as it indicates closeness. But if you look this haptics from a Western perspective in Western culture, people normally prefer to maintain a distance of one meter normally when they sit and talk to each other because particularly Americans respects themselves as individuals. They never call themselves as a part of a race. Then comes chronomics. Chronomics is a beautiful concept. This is communication through time or the study of communication through time. Sounds different. How could you communicate through time? Now, try to understand a concept called a time zone. Each and every individual in the world has got a time zone. Remember, every day you get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. And one day, you get up at 6.30 and you say, I'm late. And somebody who gets up at 5.30 every day and he gets up at 6 o'clock. For this, for him, the same time zone has got a different concept. Another thing, if you have an appointment with somebody at 9.30 and you are reaching to the appointment around 9.40, then person believes that you are casual. You are not at all serious for your meeting. So much before you interact with the person physically, you create an impression as being a careless person. But if your appointment is at 9.30 and you are meeting somebody as 9.25, so much before you meet him personally or physically, you create an impression that this is a very serious person, he is interested, he is punctual and all. So this is what we call communication through time, the study of communication through time. Now, the last one is occultsis. That is called eye contact, communication to the eye. So if you see, when human beings communicate, the eyes are supposed to be the most communicative part in a human body. I speak a lot of things. People could identify a lot of things from us through our eyes, whether we are sad, we are happy, we are aggressive, we are disgust. Now, frowning of the eyebrows and widening of the eye indicates sometimes displeasure or anger. Winding of the eyes indicates sometimes like surprise and opening of the wine slightly wide open when communicate indicates the best communicative posture. Now closing of the eyelids and frequently flucking down the eyelids indicates that I am I'm nervous, I'm not 
interested in the communicative process. Now, why non-verbal communication is important? If you see the Meharvian's model, if you take 100% as communication, 70% of the messages are communicated non-verbally and 30% messages are communicated verbally. Now, the question comes, why non-verbal communication is so important? Now, when you compare oral communication and written communication, what makes oral communication is the most prominent mode of communication because the inclusion of body language or non-verbal communication. Instant feedback can be anticipated as you see the person speaking to you. You can feel his body language. How do you react when you talk to him? How he responses when he communicates to him? Now, the most important factor is called voluntary body language and non-voluntary body language. Now, some body languages are spontaneous. If you see a snake passing, there is automatically a change in the body. So that's what you call a non-voluntary body language. And what is a voluntary body language? It's when you see somebody shouting at you. It depends on you. You can create an aggression in your body language or you can remain calm and quiet without telling that. But most probably, body language is culture specific. In different cultures and different parts of the world, it has its different entity. For example, I'm showing you a thumb. In the Middle Eastern cultures like Korea, Japan, India, this indicates all the best or best of luck. But in some of the cultures, it is anticipated as I defy you. Right? Body language and another thing in uh, eye, eye contact, it's quite culture specific. Like, the Japanese, when they communicate to somebody, you know, who is superior to them, they will prefer looking down. Because looking directly into the eyes of somebody in Japan is considered to be aggressive. But the reverse seems to be true in the American culture. The Americans believe that if you are talking to somebody, you need to look at him directly, at his eyes directly. If you don't do that, they believe you are unreliable and shifty. Now, what, what cross-cultural communication happens? Now imagine a Japanese and an American speaking to each other. As a part of the nature, the Japanese prefers to look down. And the American looks directly into the eyes of the Japanese. And the Japanese thinks the American to be aggressive and rude. And on the other hand, the American believes that the Japanese is unreliable and shifty. So body language cannot be inculcated and cannot be taught. But partly, body language can be taught to somebody if he or she does it knowingly over a part of time how to react and basic reasons of non-verbal communication is to create a positive body language because when a positive body language will communicate a positive message